As part of the Darwin 200 voyage, the science team aims to get a better understanding of marine life in British waters. Having spotted the location of an unknown wreck on the Admiralty chart near to our anchorage, marine biologist Dr. Rowan Holt set off to dive. And we were not to be disappointed. Okay, yep, happy. Mm -hmm. Both divers are now in water. Thank you. Rowan found fish shoaling around the wreckage of what appeared to be the remains of an old tugboat. After a short search, the divers found conga eels in their layers. The sea floor is covered with fine silty mud. This provides habitats for many species, including angular crabs. The divers find a pair and bring them up to the surface for the young scientists to study. Females don't, they're, they're more sort of nat natural looking. But they, they live down these burrows and they just dig a burrow down and round about sort of five inches down, little U shape. Are these quite young, small, or do they just look big? These are, these are <laughs> fairly small, yes, yeah. they do grow a bit bigger. Okay. And you can see why they're called angular crabs, because they've got that sort of very square shape to their carapace, that's the, the main shell. So that's the rhomboid? Yeah. There we go. There we go. The Darwin 200 team move west to Falmouth, where the divers descend once more to the muddy slopes just outside the main channel. A hermit crab carries a heavy load of two large parasitic anemones, somewhat inappropriately named because both species benefit in this relationship. A swimming crab uses its paddle-like legs to zip off across the seabed, and an arrow crab relies upon its amazing camouflage to remain hidden amongst the moving seaweed. As the divers make their way up the slope, they encounter a beautiful pipefish, an ambush predator, waiting for small fish or crustaceans to swim too close. Now in shallow waters, amongst a forest of bootlace weed, there are patches of calcareous red seaweed, or merle, on the seabed. The pristine white sands of Samson, on the Isles of Scilly, have forests of berry rack being kept in motion by the clean tidal currents. The rack itself is home for a variety of species of brown, green and red algae, including this red harpoon weed, a non-native introduced to the UK's waters in the 1930s and now common across the southwest. The seemingly barren plains of sand 
are actually crammed with sea potatoes. A burrowing sea urchin, which lives just below the sand surface, that rapidly reburrows if disturbed. As soon as we reach the seabed, a kukuras joins the divers. The colourful male contrasts with the plainer orange-bodied female. If he dies, she will change sex and take his place as defender of the territory. As the divers go deeper, the seaweed starts to thin out and we find colourful gardens of candelabra sponges. Snake locks and enemies, a spiny starfish and beautiful pink sea fans. But some of the sea fans are rather overgrown with weed and even a cat shark egg case. Our last dive in the southwest ends as we ascend through different forest kelps. The gentle colours and beautiful textures of the kelp forest are as enchanting as any tropical coral reef. Follow Darwin 200 as we travel north to explore the underwater world of the Scottish islands.